I just recently hit over 10,000 hours in my hardcore world. But what's left for me to do? In this video, we're going to be going over where I started, where I'm at now, and what my plans are for the future. So without further ado, my name is Linksy. Grab yourself a snack, get yourself a drink, and let's get into it. Starting things over here at Slimeville, where I started building houses like this and like this. Over to houses like this and this. I then got better at terraforming, building castles, dilapidated factories, and flying ships. But what did I learn from all that? Not only did I learn how to become a better builder and learn how to do certain techniques, but I learned something far more important than just becoming a better builder. And that's not to take it one mega build at a time, but world building. I've learned something far more important than just building and building and building. I've learned how to basically put together my world where it makes a little bit more sense, but more importantly, how to broaden my horizons on how to push further to become a better builder and become a better world builder. Before I used to look at this build over here as if it was its own single entity, but now I'm able to see even further into the future, years in the future, where I'll have boats in the front and I'll connect it with the Mossa over here. Now we all know that the sense of immersion is very, very important when it comes to world building. And I wanna make a little bit of an immersion, but I wanna make everything a little bit more cohesive as I go too. So when I come from over here in the Moss Lands, I wanna have a nice transition over to a new region of the world, the Skulk Lands. And regions a word that you guys will hear me say a lot more now than just mega builds because I am working my way towards bigger and bigger things. So as we work our way through the graveyard right here, I think it's a nice transition from something bright and beautiful over to something dark and desolate. So I want to be pretty much filling this entire area with a bunch of really cool dilapidated and gothic style structures all focused around one story so everything is a little bit more cohesive and immersive the elder dragon here that has slowly passed away let me show you guys a few other examples of what i have planned for the future of this world this is my one piece island behind me you'll see i have a michelin star restaurant here if you know the story of sanji who makes food from the all blue which is supposed to be this ocean right here for pirates of plenty all around the seas and all around the world so I want to make a bunch of pirate ships gravitating over to this island and I want to make this place look a little bit more populated as time goes on. I want to build volcanic islands. I've got about 21 ships I'm going to be putting out here just to start the project. And in the background over here, you'll notice I have this all gray stone castle that doesn't quite fit right now, but I'm trying to make a correlation between pirates and an underground dwarven kingdom which is going to expand into a massive region that i am working on and working towards for massive future plans so let me go to sleep real quick and i'll show you guys a little bit of a closer look what i got going on here so now that it's daytime i can give you guys a little bit of a closer look here so you'll notice that the castle has some wolf statues i'm trying to make this a little bit more themed after wolves and stuff like that but since I will have a bunch of pirate ships out here, I decided to put a pier out the front here where I'm going to have three different pirate ships out front of these main piers. And then I'll have smaller boats docked up along the smaller areas over here. But I also have a bunch of pirates off looting some loot where I want to make a story with what the pirates are basically selling to the dwarves. What do the dwarves need from the pirates? And what's beyond these doors right here let me show you a little bit of a closer look behind here well not a whole lot of anything back here yet but like i said this is going to be our whole region so this is probably going to take the course over the next five years or so to finish but i do have massive plans this is the very first room that i do plan to address and it might get a little bit bigger as time goes on i'll probably be expanding it out that way and out that way just so i can make the room a little bit wider and I've also been lowering the stone over here on the sides. That way I can have this stone pillar here. But I do plan to have dwarves down here, mages down here, creatures down here, and elves down here. So this will be kind of like my own Lord of the Rings style build, which will be completely underground. 
and I am doing a little bit of something new here, something that I have learned over time, and that is how to better organize myself. So I did learn that going back and forth from my storage room back to like these builds has been taking up way too much of my time. So I decided that I was going to leave everything over here inside of chests. That way I didn't have to go back and forth all the time, being a little bit more resourceful with the amount of time that I allow myself. But that's enough about region building. What else have I learned in the last four and a half years that I spent in this world? So there's a question that I get basically on the daily in my Twitch streams. And it is, how do you get all the resources to build such big builds? Where do you get it all from? Are you cheating? Well, actually far from it. I'm using a little thing called planning. And I'm going to get into a little bit of that. So there are two types of people in this world. Those who plan and those who just brute force their way through stuff. And well, I am a strategic planner. What do I mean by that? Well, I like to snowball a lot of my resources. How do I do that? Well, I kind of know exactly what I'm going to be doing before I do it. Although I do do a lot of my builds. Most of my builds, if not all of my builds, are free-handed. I do kind of have a general idea of what the resources are going to be. So there are a couple of resources that are always hot. Sand, gravel, obviously being utilized in many crafting recipes. Since they don't duplicate TNT, that becomes very, very, very hard to get late game. But there are things that I do to combat that, such as villager trading. So these librarians right here, this is where I get a lot of my glass. 48 glass per trade, which is really good. If you are catch it at the right time, you can catch it so you can get two different trades. So this is actually the perfect time to get two trades. Not only am I able to get glass, I also utilize these experience potions right here. What do I use these experience potions for? Well, let me show you. I put on my wings right here. Splash a little bit of that in there. You'll notice that my wings are fully repaired. This actually saves me a lot of time and a lot of effort. But I get a little bit later into like a build. Because repairing my tools all the time becomes a little bit time consuming. Not only do I do that, I do a lot of don't really trade with these guys all that much these guys mason oh my gosh the amount of people who don't realize you could buy full course blocks from masons is absolutely wild if i know i have a build coming up that's going to require a lot of quartz i'll be buying quartz pretty much every single day and if i need smooth quartz i'll have my furnace array system just across the hallway where i could be smelting quartz at the same time as buying quartz and here these are pretty standard villagers it's just basically if i need to put leather in my world farmers honestly never use them butchers butchers are great because i actually do eat pork chops i think pork chops are the best food source in the game not only are they easy to, to obtain but they replenish your food drums a lot better anyways these guys right here these are where I basically trade up all of my iron. So I'll take iron. I'll trade it with uh, these villagers. None of them are cured. So I'm not really too worried about uh, iron trades being a little bit too much. But there's a couple of these guys who will take my iron. And of course the toolsmiths. But this is basically where I spend a lot of my time. I'll be buying resources. Even if I don't need them right now. I'll be setting myself up for the future. And if I get more resources than I need. Then I can snowball them into the next project. Now, hopefully it doesn't seem like I'm rambling too much, but I am trying to teach you guys exactly what I've learned throughout the last 10,000 hours that I have spent in this world. It could be a lot of information. So hopefully this isn't too much. This guy's mad. Real mad. But you know, we got to stick around for it. Yep. There's another thing that I want to address to go along with the resource gathering type stuff that I've learned. And that is the placement of where I put my farms. So right in behind this wall right here is actually where my creeper farm is. And I'll show you guys what that looks like here in just a minute. And behind this wall right here, I also have my sugarcane farm, which you'll see is actually filtering in here as we speak. So the more time that I spend inside of my storage room, the more resources I'm getting at the same time which is obviously very, very helpful. So let me show you guys the creeper farm and where that's situated. And let me show you guys the factory I also have and my industrial district. And here's the creeper farm. Yeah, not as big as you were expecting, was it? 
but sometimes it's not really about how big of a farm you have but how you use it and let me show you guys a little bit about what i mean by that because this thing absolutely cranks i spend so much time inside my storage room grabbing out pallets and organizing stuff that i honestly have way more gunpowder than i'll ever need and it all connects up to the end of this tunnel right here where i pretty much store up all of my gunpowder and of course a lot of this gunpowder is empty right now because now that i'm looking it's it, of course it's empty because i want to put it on recording anyways down this really beautiful tunnel right here i have a few things i also have an auto crafter for my uh rockets and then i also have an auto crafter to craft up tnt which is great i just don't have any sand to put in there because uh yeah i'm i'm broke i'm broke when it comes to sand and so you guys can map it out a bit better in correlation my sugarcane farm is just underneath here and my creeper farm is just underneath here and everything that you guys see around here is pretty much spawn proof you don't have to worry about any mobs basically spawning in here and every single cave has been pretty much lit up as well which definitely helps out the rates of the creeper farm but let's go over to the factory now now i just spoke about not afking in the world and being a little bit more productive with my time welcome to the factory this is where I'll be farming up my bamboo right here. So I can get tons and tons of bamboo. That way I can craft up different types of wood. I also have a kelp farm over here, a cactus farm, and a dripstone farm, which is not that fast. But anyways, the the whole the whole like purpose behind having all these farms here is not to actually rely on them for the resources themselves, but like I said, I snowball. I also have a lava farm over here, a cocoa bean farm over here. And the main reason why I ever come over here is because of this bad boy right here, my concrete farm. So if I'm up here and I'm farming up little bits and pieces of concrete and I'm having to convert stuff around here, well, you're right. All those other farms are also working for me at the same time. So I'll be converting just concrete, making up shulker boxes on shulker boxes of concrete, and I'll also be getting all the other resources in this vicinity that I would like to get. But what's the future for this place? And I also did really just say get. But anyways. Over here in the factory area, I have this little silo dealio right here. I don't know if this is a silo. I don't know what to call this, to be honest. But I want to be able to put the crafters all along here. That way, if I'm over here converting concrete, I can also be over here auto crafting a bunch of resources in the game. And this thing right here, this is my super ugly all a to silverfish farm, which looks super, super bad. But pretend like that's almost, um, pretend like that's not there. Anyways, this entire factory is going to become an auto crafting vicinity or facility that is going to work while I'm in the vicinity. There we go. Words. Um, so I can get done as many things as I possibly can get done as fast as possible while I'm just doing one thing at a time. If that makes sense, that's probably the worst way to word that. Anyways, I'm going to show you guys my industrial district. Looks like a city, don't it? That's because it is a city, you goose. Anyways, this is my industrial district. I plan to expand this place. One common trend that you will notice is that I have multiples of the same farm in different areas of my world. If I'm building up one area, would you, would you shut up? I'm building one area up of my world then I'm building up another area up of my world so that that beeping noise that you guys just heard well that is actually my melon and pumpkin farm I think it was kind of kind of hard yep so if I ever need melons or pumpkins I can just come over here it's also where I get all my coarse flowers and my purper basically and I got a little bit of a bamboo farm over here but this one works off of a flying machine that breaks every single time I use it down here I have a coarse flower farm if I just need just coarse flowers I use the snowballs to basically pop off the coarse flowers up top it's pretty easy you just kind of like you know shoot the coarse flowers with your snowballs if you can kind of Kovax up and hit all your shots it's actually not too bad so it's a good little, like little aim practice right there over here is where all uh the bamboo gets fit fed into feed it into fed it into whatever you want to say that's where that all goes 
and then other farms that i have is a flower farm sheep farm a cactus farm i also have a mud farm in here i'm not going to show you guys all that because this isn't really a world tour by any means i just want to kind of show you guys the power of working towards many things in multiple ways if that makes any sense so if i'm over here building up my city i'm also farming up resources for the future now i know i'm a bit of a wordsmith and i understand that you guys probably do get exactly what i'm saying most of the time but if you guys don't understand what i'm saying leave a comment in the section down below i might be able to answer you guys i mean more than likely i probably will answer you unless i'm too busy being tall or something like that but you know that's how I've learned how to tackle resources for long-term projects and continue the growth of this world without anything becoming too daunting. But let's go a little over into the past and look at some of the where I started and where I'm at now with some things. And one thing that I will probably continuously try to get better and better at every single day is organics. This was my very first organic besides the turtle that I have inside of the end. This is Puff. It is a dragon, believe it or not. I don't know if it's able to fly, but I know it can walk because I gave it legs and little paws and stuff like that. But this is Puff, which is uh, kind of funny. But that was my very first dragon that I ever built in the world. I'm going to show you guys my second and then my third dragon. And my second dragon over here is the Ender Dragon right outside my temple. I absolutely love this dragon, but it does have its flaws one of its flaws is it came off very two-dimensional with the wings i really wish i made those wings a little bit more three-dimensional because if you look at it from this angle it doesn't really look realistic but if you're looking at it from this angle over here it looks gorgeous i love this i think i absolutely nailed the mouth I really love the face. I love the eye. I love the experience that it's shooting out of its mouth. But I obviously have to be my biggest critic sometimes when I'm learning how to build stuff. And the wings here just don't really... They don't really, like, show up. But anyways, when you compare this dragon to my last dragon, you can see a little bit of progression. Now, this third dragon I'm going to show you, I feel is my best dragon yet. Now, this is my third and final dragon I have in this world where you can see I learned a little bit from each dragon that I built. One, I changed the wings so they looked a little bit more dynamic so it actually comes out further and further. So when you're looking at the dragon straight on, it actually looks like a dynamic pose. It doesn't look like it's also 100% symmetrical even though I think I was trying to go for symmetry here. I also add in a little bit of a flare with the glass of the wings. I thought it looked great. The dragon body itself, I think, turned out extremely well. I love the way that the head turned out. Yeah, it didn't add any fangs or anything crazy like that, but I think this is a step in the right direction. Sure, there are some places that are a little bit, a little bit flat, but there's only so much you can do in Minecraft. The smaller and smaller you go in scale. Now I'm going to use your guys' imagination here a little bit, but imagine that dragon flying around out here would actually look really good, right? Well, that's my goal. I want to have really cool organics flying around or just hanging about because I think organics can really bring your builds to life. One of them being these little birds right here. Even though it's just three little slabs, looking at these trees and seeing those little birds in the distance really bring that build together a lot better, huh? Same thing goes with over here. I got a little bit of birds right there, a little bit of birds right there. And then of course I also have the big birds out here in the front, which work out really nicely. They don't even need to be birds. You can imagine that these guys are even bats too, depending on the area that you're in. But obviously I did this retroactively. I built these birds to go along with the floating islands. And then I decided, you know what? Having some birds in some other areas would really bring together a little bit of something else. So just know that once you're done a build, you can always go back to do more stuff to that build. It's not just one and done. You get to move on to the next build by any means. Go back to your old builds and build them up some more. Just don't push yourself too far. And what do I mean about not pushing yourself too far? Well, if you find yourself burning out from a project, shift gears, 
do something a bit different. You'll notice that everywhere in my world, I've got something different going on. Right here, this is my Steampunk Hall of Fame. This is very, very, very different from something else that would be going on in my world. And by Hall of Fame, I mean Nether Hub. <laughs> Anyways, you'll see that I have all different kinds of styles that I build in in this world that I think keeps me going because I'm learning something new every single build that I've got going on. So you just watched me walk through Steampunk over to Gothic over to well bright colorful and beautiful right over here this is alice in wonderland this is a very different style from what you just saw me walk through even over here bright and beautiful over here a little bit more organic looking with like a little bit more green some beaches i built this island uh and then this one over here being a little bit more like snowy type deal even though this is probably gonna go over a lot of big changes in the future because obviously i'm missing a lot of pathways and such uh, this island needs to happen first with the pathways, but this brings me over to our next segment of today's video, and that is a massive one, and that's lore. Lore and story is what drives your world long term. So with these little carts that I got going on here, there's a little bit of a story involved. If you played Animal Crossing, you know where this guy's from. This is Jesse and James. So we got Jesse over here. We got James over here. We got like the Super Mario characters, like Olaf hanging out here. Perry the Platypus chilling out with like this duck detective or uh, chicken detective. It's not a duck. Uh, but anyways, as I walk through my world, there's a little bit of a story involved. Armor stand magic can really make that happen a lot faster. If you guys want to incorporate a little bit of that to spice up your world a little bit. But lore and story is something i can only scratch the surface of in this video because it is such a massive video that i would have to direct you somewhere else just for you guys to really truly understand the scope of lore and story now at this point of the video if you haven't liked it already and you've made it to this point you might as well like it now and if you haven't subscribed so please do so because it's free to do and it really helps out the channel but i'm interested to see what you guys have learned in your world so far I know it's really hard to kind of put into words exactly how much you've learned, especially when you've, well, especially when I've been playing the game for as long as I have, I'm continuously learning something new every single day. And I appreciate you guys showing up to my Ted talk. So I just want to say a special thank you to all of you guys out there who have allowed me to do this full time for the last four years of this world. I appreciate each and every single one of you guys. I get to stand up here with my snazzy little outfit. That one of my moderators framed for me. I also have the slim skin on. I don't know how I feel about this. I guess I just, I didn't realize that I always have like the big skin on. Um, anyways, my graduation camp looking all schnazzy and stuff. I don't know how I feel about the, the slim skin though. What do you guys think? Special thank you to Mandolin for making me my skin. Appreciate you. Really cool of her to do this for me. Because I'll be graduating from the 1000 hour Andy over to a 10,000 hour Andy in this world. My name's not Andy. But hopefully you guys learned something from today's video, a little bit inside of my head on how I plan out these big projects and what I've learned a little bit of throughout the 10,000 hours that I've spent in this hardcore world. But if you guys have anything more that you guys would like to know, let me know in the comment section down below. Maybe I'll make a YouTube video on it. Maybe I'll answer your comment and let you guys know a little bit of like how I do things and stuff like that. But... Maybe check out this video.